Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that. And also, if the quality of this video is not that great, if it's fairly poor, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2024 related video here on my channel, and another sort of reaction video as well, because right now I am about to listen for the first time to snippets of all but one of the songs that will be involved in the German national selection for Eurovision 2024, which will take place in Malmö in Sweden this May. As always, you're welcome to let me know your thoughts on anything I discuss by leaving a comment. And, as always, there are links in the description to my other social media pages. Check them out if you so wish. So, I don't have a huge amount of time in which to film this video, so I'm going to try and rattle through it at a good pace. I have information in front of me to make sure I don't forget anything too important. So, Eurovision Song Contest Das Deutsche Finale... Uh, is going to take place on February the 16th, according to this, and Barbara Schoenberger will be there in Berlin to present it. There was a submission period for songs, of course, of which 572 seemingly were received by the broadcaster. By the end of November, these were narrowed down to 32, who were assessed by a 20-member international jury, consisting of previous jurors, for their countries at Eurovision, whose names will be revealed later, to select a maximum of ten finalists by the end of the year. These, ultimately revealed to be eight, were announced and released on January the 19th. I mean, that's already perhaps a little bit concerning. They couldn't select the number that they were originally going to go for. They've ended up plumping for eight. Okay, fair enough. Maybe the quality's not that high again. We'll just have to wait and see. Um... These songs will be introduced via the show ESC Vor Act, consisting of eight daily broadcasts between February the 5th and February the 15th. But the songs are already out because I've got a video with a recap of them ready to go, and I'm going to listen to the snippets in just a moment. Now, there is another show called Ich will zum ESC, uh, which is going to be on television in Germany between January the 25th and February the 1st. Five pre-recorded episodes. Conchita Wurst is involved. It's a whole bunch of newcomers, and some will move on to the next stage, with four qualifying for the final, where they will present a newly composed song. The winner of this event will be determined by a televoting round. Now, I should say, in the actual national final itself, there is going to be, I think, an international jury and a public vote to determine the winner. Thank heavens for that international jury vote. So, I mean, Germany have been there every year at Eurovision Bar 1996, which was quite controversial, but there we are. They've won twice, which isn't great in all those years, but, you know, some countries have still never won. Uh, Nicole triumphed uh, with Ein bisschen Frieden in the early 80s in Harrogate. That was a big hit. Uh, went to number one in the UK as well, I believe. And then another young female won for Germany in 2010, Lena, with Satellite. And she's gone on to have a very successful career indeed. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if some people in Germany have tried to coax her back into doing Eurovision for a third time. Maybe she could save the day. Who knows? Anyway, over the past decade, indeed longer than that, we all know Germany's form at the contest has been rubbish. Uh, let's not beat around the bush here. It's been very, very poor. In 2014, we had Is It Right? The answer was no, it wasn't. And uh, although it was a fine song, it was mired in mid-table. We had Anne-Sophie. She was last with zero points. That was very disappointing to see, but there we are. We had Jamie Lee. I like that song, but it finished last. We had Perfect Life, the most dull staging slash performance in general you can possibly fathom. Didn't do very well in Kiev. Michael Schulter, You Let Me Walk Alone. Proof Germany can do the business when necessary. But then they fell apart again because we had Sisters. Didn't do that well. I didn't mind the song in the end. Ben Dolich would have done well. The pandemic happened. What a shame. Then we had Gendrick. I mean, violent thing to I don't feel hate. Whiplash to the extreme. Going from quality to uh, a song like that. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but there we are. He didn't do very well. We then had Malik Harris. I think everybody's forgotten about that song, to be honest. <laughs> uh, 
And then uh, in Liverpool, we had Lord of the Lost last year, and they finished last, although really didn't deserve to. That was a really top-notch performance and a pretty decent effort. Germany tried something different. It didn't work. So this year, they've got to go back to square one and try something different again. I swear on my life, if I see Ickerhuft gold in this lineup, I'm flying over to Germany and giving them a good piece of my mind. That is not the direction you should be going in. So... The video I'm watching won't be in the bottom corner of the video you're watching, that's the way it usually is. This is on the Mr. Eurovisia Recaps channel, Das Deutsche Finale 2024 Automatic Finalists Recap, of course. One more song will be joining this batch at a later date because of that other pre-recorded business with Conchita. So, here we go. I've no idea what to expect here. Uh, I just hope quality shines through, and I hope Germans recognize the quality if it's here when they see it no jokey stuff no bang average stuff hopefully there's a song here maybe two or three songs here wishful thinking i know but hopefully uh there's some good material to work with here and eurovision fans you know we can see the potential quite early on so let's hope for the best i'm going to rub off these portuguese names from yesterday the amount of Eurovision fans I've seen online who are loving the quality of every national final this season, and I'm thinking to myself, what are you listening to? Most national finals are bang average. Bang average. It's very, very rare a national final happens where every song is just so good. It's a rare thing. Um, but I'm all for getting pumped up for a national final, absolutely. So here we go, Germany. Deliver the goods. Oh, man. There's a lot of pressure on this. First up is Tears Like Rain by Bodine Monet. Well, that's uh, not a bad start at all. And I quite like what she's wearing in this picture. <laughs> um... It immediately struck me as a bit like Florence and the Machine. Maybe that's just me, but, um... Oh, I mean, that's not bad at all. You're on the list. That's a good start. It's downhill from here. Yeah, not bad. Who's next? Okay, come on. So this is Katza by Gallant. Okay, they're clearly going for something that's maybe a tad on the more experimental side here, but this is so not it for Germany. So if they send this... You know, we know what's coming. Next up is Always on the Run by Isaac. Okay, this immediately strikes me as James Arthur, Rag and Bone Man, that sort of thing. He's got a very sort of gruff vocal. Uh, that's not bad. It's very safe and probably would be forgotten in a flash at Eurovision. Uh, but not bad. You know, next up is Undream You by Leona. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a very simple ballad. Seems very cutesy. My immediate impression, juries would like it, but not a huge amount. Public would completely ignore it. So maybe not the strongest choice there. Of course, I will listen to these songs in my own time when I get the chance. Next up is Naive by Mary Rain. Bit of schlager, this is.
Oh man, it's Melfest circa 20 years ago. Give it to Alcazar. Woo! <laughs> um, to be fair, that type of music I know can do very well in Germany. Um, and I think a wider audience would perhaps appreciate it enough. It's alright. Next up. Whoa! It's Maximilian Mutzka. Whoa, just can't wait until tonight, baby, till I have you by my side, baby, just can't wait until tonight, baby, for being with you. That's enough of that, but oh my god, 20 years ago, 20 years ago when he was in Istanbul with that song, Stefan Raab off to one side, the songwriter pretending to play the acoustic guitar, that's a cracking song, he's back! Forever strong. Oh, you know, I, I'm putting him on the list mainly because it's Maximilian Mutzka. Uh, his fan base, I mean, he's had a pretty good career in Germany, I believe, ever since Eurovision, but his fan base, I don't know how big it is these days, but that could play a part in how well this song does. Not bad. Not brilliant. But not bad. 99. Love on a budget. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this seems perfectly fine. But again, immediately thinking ahead, I've got that Eurovision cap on. This at the ESC, nowhere to be found. Oh Boy by Rick, who has been involved before. Oh Boy. <laughs> um, straight onto this list. So, apart from the wildcard type effort we'll be getting in due course, that's it for Das Deutsche Finale 2024. What do you think of that? Because I think it was okay. Again, Germany aren't winning this year. But I've written down three names. I could have written down more, to be honest. Uh, Bodine Monet. Oh, take a look at the songwriters. Ashley Hicklin. He's written quite a few national final songs, uh, internal entries before. I think he co-wrote Me and My Guitar for Belgium in 2010. Um, Pele Loriano, I think, co-wrote Who the Hell is Edgar? Don't quote me on that. That's an interesting songwriting team. Um, Tears Like Rain. Absolutely one of the strongest songs here. Based on the snippets, absolutely one of the strongest songs here. Then we have Maximilian Mutzka with Forever Strong, which he co-wrote. And then we have Rick with Oh Boy, which it seems as though he wrote himself. Nice. Um, Love on a Budget, I don't think so. Naive, maybe. Undream You is co-written by Elsie Bay, who seems to be getting everywhere this season. Um... I don't think that's the right choice, but it seems like a perfectly fine song. Always on the Run by Isaac, which is just the sort of thing I can see Germany sending. Uh, that was fine. And then Katza. Oh, give me strength, Germany. Give me strength. Uh, it's probably going to be an alright song to listen to in the end. It's probably going to have intriguing staging. But for the love of all that is holy, that's not the song, is it? It's not the song. But I will listen to all of them in my own time. Chances are I'll like it more afterwards. You know, once a few days have gone by and I listen to the songs in my own time. Chances are I'll like all, all of these songs a lot more than I currently do. Um, but yes, I would say, oh boy... Or bust, potentially. Let me know what you think, especially if you are from Germany. And I'll be back with a video probably tomorrow, because it's time to think about Raven for Slovenia. Oh yes, until then, take care of yourselves, stay safe, 
and bye for now.